Do you know something that's so ridiculously simple, but you didn't think about it so that when you're taught it, you feel like an idiot? That was me, last Friday, in geology class. Put it in perspective, we're learning about the seven basic principles of geology, and in particular, we were talking about the fifth one. So first, a little example to set the tone. You have a cake. It is beautiful and wonderful. It's chilling there. It's existing. And then you take a slice. What came first, the cake or the slice? Of course, it's the slice. No, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. It's the cake. And that principle applies with rocks. For this example, we're gonna use a nice little sedimentary stack right here. Pretend that's maybe a sandstone, got some mudstone, maybe coal, more mudstone. Doesn't matter. All that matters is that you can see there are layers of rocks. The rocks are chilling. Now, let's say an earthquake happens and these rocks all of a sudden they get a fault and you see this. Okay, imagine you're a geologist in the field and you didn't know there was an earthquake there. All you know is that you come across these rocks and they're banded, but there's this peculiar little fault line and they've been shifted up. So what came first, the fault line or the rocks? It is very clearly the rocks. This is like the most simple concept in existence, but I have never thought about rocks critically because I never had the reason to think about rock critically. So now I feel like an absolute heel and a pleb and a dum-dum because wow, I never was able to put this together by myself. Seriously, seriously? This is the fifth principle of geology. It's called cross-cutting relations. Anything that cuts across something else is younger than the thing it cuts across. And wow, that's a mouthful, but it makes sense. It is logical. It is stupidly logical. It's very simple. I was sitting in geology class like, how, how did I never think of this before? What is wrong with me? I mean, to be fair, I'm going into the computer programming, so I really don't think it would have impacted my day-to-day -day job, but man, did I feel like a dum-dum. So I also have this formation just for another example. So imagine you have a big swell of magma under the surface, and because of the weight of the overlying rock, that pushes down on all that magma, and it shoots up through the rock. This is called a dike, not a dip. Now, you're a geologist in the field. You didn't know there was magma in this area at all. You just come across this hardened rock, and you're like, wow, what is this? So you look at it, and you instantly realize, well, this igneous rock from the magma, which when magma hardens, it becomes igneous, it's cutting across this clear sandstone layer, so we have to know this part right here, it is older than this part. Ta-da! You are now a geologist. Use your power wisely. Actually, nope, I lied. There's one more example. I forgot about him. So you have this example. So you have the igneous rock right there, just like over here, but instead of it going up and down, like in a erect... I'm playing. No more, no, no more of those jokes. We're going to stop. Instead of going up and down perpendicular to the ground, it's parallel to the layers. If you're a geologist, you can think, well, look at that. That's a clear succession of layers. But you're wrong. Maybe you could t um, take some rock samples back and test them and then realize the exact ages of all the rocks. But you're on the field and you don't want to do that because that costs money and time. And you're a geologist, so you're poor and you're not going to do that because dang, no, you can hardly afford heating right now. Are you kidding me? So instead, you study the rock and you're like, hmm, let's see, let's see. Well, this rock contains bits of the other rock surrounding it. Hmm. We're going to do another example. You have a chocolate chip cookie. Let me get one in hand. So you have a chocolate chip cookie in your hand. It's chilling there. But what came first? the chips in the chocolate chip cookie or the cookie itself? Obviously the chips, the chips had to exist before the cookie existed or else they couldn't be in the cookie. It's because you take the chips, put them in with other ingredients, then you cook it and then the cookie appears. That principle applies here. It's the sixth principle of geology called the principle of inclusion. So if a rock contains bits of the surrounding rock, that rock is younger than the surrounding rock. The sill formed by magma, as I said, it didn't go straight up, it got wedged in between the layers, but because it was really hot magma, obviously it's going to melt off little bits and they're going to be contained in the rock, which you can pick out and use to relative date the rock to the surrounding layers. Geology is awesome. I love it. I'm going to eat a cookie. If you already knew this and you're laughing at me because, wow, how did you never figure that out? Okay, I don't care. If you didn't know this and you now feel like an idiot like me, it's okay. Just eat a cookie and don't worry about it because you're not dumb. You're probably going into like the medical field anyway, so this probably doesn't pertain to you, so it doesn't matter. Thank you for making it to the end. That's very cool of you. I would offer you a cookie, but you can't have one because you're through a screen. I'm not even going to pretend to be like, oh, virtual cookies, nah. It's like, no, you're not getting anything. I'm not going to lie. No sugar coating here. But if you want to help me, please consider subscribing here and following me on my Twitch. You see, by the end of the year... I wanted to reach 100 followers on all my social media accounts. And I did that everywhere except for Twitch. I'm only at 56 right now, and that's pathetic. There's no pressure, though. Do what you want. Bye.